I'm Rob Lucuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Emmy winner Tatiana Maslani, the star of She-Hulk Attorney at Law. First of all, Tatiana, I just really always want to know this. What is the coolest and most unexpected thing about being an MCU superhero? The coolest is what, like, things that, like, what just happened, where your son had a Funko Pop of my character, like, that, that stuff is so, and, like, seeing, you know, the, the choices we made in terms of, like, her hair have, like, made it onto an action figure, that's super cool, um, and then the straight, is this the most unexpected? Yeah, like, what were you not expecting to happen? I, I don't I had zero I had zero sense of what was gonna happen. Mm. And I think that's what was so scary about it. Like I didn't know what it meant for my life or whatever. And I think the most unexpected thing is that it's just kind of like it's just another job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you move on and you know, you totally you do bigger and better things. But I'll tell you what, like well, there's plenty of stuff that we can talk about with the show, but one of the highlights of the show for me was the way that you and um, creator Jessica Gow and lead director Kat Cora um, really fleshed out Jennifer Walters as like a really compelling character in her own right. Like she's super, she's a bit awkward, she's super vulnerable and really relatable. And I'm just wondering, like, was that a big selling point for you to take on this role and, and kind of shape who Jennifer Walters was, not necessarily just about all about She-Hulk? Yeah, it had it had like everything to do with when I read the first script and Jessica's writing was so, it was so funny and so human and so um, irreverent of any expectations of what a superhero is. Um, and yeah, and I found Jennifer just at her, her conflict so infinitely relatable and um, yeah, like the way Jess wrote her, there's all these beautiful, subtle kind of themes of like what it is to inhabit a different body and to walk into a room uh, and have people have certain expectations of you, treat you differently, uh, look at you a certain way, objectify you a certain way. And I feel like that um, was such like delicious territory to kind of dig into. And Jessica, you know, obviously did it with like so much humor and and she and I like I just love her brain I love the way she thinks and um yeah it was just a joy it was just a joy to read this character yeah I, and as you mentioned it is so funny I really I mean I've watched every Marvel show and some most of them all of them really are really brilliant they they there's something about the MCU on Disney plus for example that I just find so um enjoyable and entertaining this one is such a breath of fresh air and yet there's still a lot in it that I wasn't I didn't see coming and you mentioned how you know uh, for example uh, objectifying women in the spotlight celebrities influencers that kind of thing I did not see that coming and I found that really compelling uh, I just wanted did, did you relate to that personally as you're trying to flesh out the character and, and that particular aspect of the show yeah I mean I think as an actor it, it's definitely something I connected to just in terms of um as you are you know our job has this weird byproduct of being like people want to know you or people think they know you or people know you yeah. or whatever um and it and it's a strange part of the job because so much for me the joy in the job is transforming and in finding um other people inside of me or relating to other people's experiences or expressing something that maybe isn't something I do in my everyday life so finding that that those open possibilities that have nothing to do with who I am. Um, and at the same time, I feel like um, on a on a more like day-to-day -day scale, I think that our that women, if I'm using binary terms, mm. when a woman walks into a space, she is aware of she is aware of the space she's walking into. There's no way that we don't um uh there's there's just there's so much there are so many eyes on women's bodies and there are so many um uh senses of ownership that people have over women's image or bodies and so that to me felt day-to-day -day 
micro level interesting you know outside yeah. of the celebrity thing yeah just like who owns your body and how do you own your own body and and who you are and and then of course she becomes a six foot whatever she hulk <laughs> who inhabits the space six even more seven. so yes like, that's exactly. brilliant i just think that is also brilliant and and we're not getting bashed over the head with you know the message but it's there and it's interesting and that's cool i mean it's a good thing what also interests me with big productions like this is you were on production, I think, two years ago now. And so, and we're still talking about it. And mm -hmm. But as you mentioned earlier, you move on, you do other things, you do Perry Mason, you're about to go on Broadway again, how exciting. Mm -hmm. um, when you think back on, on uh, during production, I think you were in Georgia, um, what, like, there, was there anything about being in production that has still stuck with you as, as a performer now that you kind of learned about yourself? I mean, for me, I'd never done comedy before. I grew up doing improv, uh, like from a young age, I was doing improv in French and I was doing improv uh, in high school then. And I did it after in long form companies. And it was like my favorite place to be and my favorite thing to watch, my favorite thing to be part of. But at the same time, I never felt totally like I belonged there. I was always like, it was like, it, it was my people. But at the same time, I was like, I'm definitely not the funniest. I'm definitely not like the natural comedian, but it's like my favorite world and I revere comedians. And so to get to step into something that for me is like, like I'm more, you know, like um, starstruck by a, a comedian or a cartoon voice actor than I am by anybody else other than like musicians, but like, yeah. so, so to get to be part of it and to work with Ginger Gonzaga and to work with, you know, Josh Sagara and John Bass, it's like these incredible comedic actors and I'm getting to play with them every day. And it, it's just such a fun challenge for me as an actor to, to stretch my muscles in that way. It's so funny that you say that because if I think back to thousands of people I've interviewed, every once in a while I'll get a comedian that I get so starstruck by because they're just they've you know they've made me ugly laugh and that's a very vulnerable yeah. place for me <laughs> I just I, I what you say yeah oh, well it's like humor is like very specific yes. humor like touches you somewhere that's like yeah it's like so core to who you are your sense of humor and yeah. if somebody else like gets it that's that's where you fall in love like that's like yes. fall in love territory yeah it totally is. And that's like, you know, when you have kids and stuff and you can all laugh at the same thing, it's just, I can't even put it into words how transcendent that is for me as, as a human being. That. Anyway, I'm not talking, yeah. about, I'm talking about you. Um, so look, I was also thinking about this because I don't know what goes into the whole technical aspects of creating the She-Hulk character. I know that um, Malia Aria was the kind of on-set body double that did a lot of the physicality of it. And I'm curious about what went into the collaboration with her and with and Kat and, and and everyone on set to make that work. Like, how does it actually work for you? Because it's still you, but she was on the set a lot as well. Yeah. So Malia and I had a really interesting dynamic because for for her, she was um, she was helping me understand what it is to walk into a space and occupy, you know, six foot seven, mm. I'm five, three. It's a very different experience. You sit in a chair differently. Um, spaces don't accommodate you the same way, doorways, chairs, things like that. Um, and so, so for us, she and I, she would come in, sit in the scene as I had blocked it and sort of give me a sense of like what the space was that we were taking, that I was taking up. Um, and the other collaboration that was huge for me was uh, with the the stunt team with Sarah and Matt, who also played She Hulk. They would be in the mocap and they would do the fighting sequences or action sequences um, with me. And for for us, it was about finding um, a physical vocabulary for how she moves. So we we did a lot of like character work. It was less like. We, we obviously like learned how to fight or they taught me how to yeah. fight, but it was more about like, how does she fight? How, she's not trained. She's not good at this. She doesn't want to do it. Nice. Fighting, like, physical fighting is not her thing. <laughs> so like, how does she come into owning it? And how does she walk into a room? And um, yeah, it was really fun to find because then there's a lot of comedy in those moments. You know, there's a lot of like, yeah. she's, 
she's able to flick a guy, you know, like uh-huh. this, and he goes flying through a wall. So it's it, it was fun to build those together. Oh yeah, I can imagine. And you are not exactly a towering figure physically, right? So not exactly. It, just, it made it even more <laughs> pronounced. Um, yeah. I, I really also enjoyed, by the way, um, all the guests on the show, um, obviously Mark Ruffalo and, um, you know, twerking with Megan Thee Stallion. And, and we, of course, in this family are, are obsessed with Patty Guggenheim as Madison. Yes. Oh, yeah, um, my God. With two N's at the end, of course. Or whatever That's right. And a Y. Oh, and my God, something. I love it. But yeah. <laughs> Jamila Jamil as Titania um, is is our fave because it, um, it, and it actually gave you an opportunity um, as Jennifer to, to have a really great wedding fight with her in episode three before you transitioned to She-Hulk. Was that as fun as it looked? Because it looked like you guys are having a ball. Yeah, I mean, that scene, that was one of the last sequences we shot. We had such an amazing director, Anu Valia, who I'm absolutely head over heels for. Yeah. Go see anything she does. She is so brilliant. And um, yeah, she. it was just like, it's too complete. The thing about Titania for Jen is that she in so many ways is like embracing the superhero thing in a way that I think Jen secretly is jealous of. Like that she's able to own it. Yeah. She's she's like one of those girls that Jen looks at on Instagram and is like, oh, I wish I could do that. <laughs> but at the same time, I resent it and I'm not that. And she's like, she's her shadow, you know, if we we're talking in like Jungian terms or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's a really fun dynamic. And to have her fighting, like Titania is like, like throwing her you know on onto concrete and jenna's like so drunk she doesn't even feel it oh, <laughs> you know what i mean so good. and then i have to say jessica gal made so many of my dreams come true number one twerking with megan the stallion which like i basically <laughs> left my body i was like on a different planet but also setting the the wedding fight song to everybody dance now which was my favorite oh. song for about 15 years me too yeah oh my god i had it was my first tape cnc music factory is my first to set i've got it somewhere in the garage like i will never <laughs> really? it it's so gonna make it sweat. yeah but it was like you know you get to work on a show where so much of like the weird things that are part of you get to be expressed it was really it was a joy it's very cool. So offline, we were talking about how I interviewed you 10 years ago, right? And it's when I was way younger. Um, and you were just kind of starting out in the spotlight. Obviously, you would had a great career back in Saskatchewan and, and Ontario, Ontario. But um, you started becoming more popular in the States with Orphan Black. And I was like, listen, you're going to get nominated at the Emmys. I'm telling you, you've got to pick an episode. And you're like, what? And you're, you're being so polite. But, I mean, you were looking at me like, I don't think so. But two years later, it happened. So I wasn't wrong. I was just ahead of the game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm putting that yeah, out there. Yeah. And then, so I was, you know, I'm just going to put it out there that I, I was the first, but I, I really wasn't. But I was one. Okay. <laughs> so you got nominated and then you won. And I will never forget it because for all of us nerds that watch this stuff and we, this is our bread and butter, it was just like a moment where not the underdog, but someone won because the uh, the role was just undeniable. And mm. you walked up on stage with your phone, you were shocked, and you said you felt lucky to be on a show that puts women, women at the centre. And you've been doing that ever since. But I want to know, can you remember how you felt that moment with your phone up on the stage where you were just, like, bamboozled and you won? Yeah, it was like... Uh... It it, it 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 brought up the worst parts of my Canadian sort of self. Like, I was just like, I don't, this, I'm a fraud. And I'm also, wrong. like, I'm sorry for taking up your time. Yeah. It, it's such a weird place to be in. And and the thing, the thing about awards for me is, is I have a real, I, I, how can you ever place a value judgment on a performance? There are so many elements that go into making a performance what it is. There are so many unseen parts of it. We see that like massively in She-Hulk with all the CG, like the VFX artists who work ridiculous hours in unbearable conditions to churn out these beautiful renditions of a nuanced character that when I see it, I'm like, I can see her thinking, I can see her. 
you know, and that's a com that's a collaboration between me and an artist I've never met. Yeah. There's so many parts that is that that artist is never named, you know, in these these situations. And like there's just so much that goes into there's such a collaborative energy that goes into building any one performance. So yeah. to be up there by myself is a strange. I think that was the biggest thing is like, this is a strange feeling to be up here alone. Yeah. You know, yeah. I couldn't have created this character without or these characters without Christian Brune or without Jordan Gavaris or without Maria Doyle Kennedy, like these, oh. these chemistries, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. It's yeah. so true. But, you know, ever since we in, in the industry, we always talk about will so-and-so pull off a Maslani and actually win the award because they're just so undeniable, <laughs> even though like you're not in a big show on HBO, but it's just too good to pass up. And so you've become part of the lexicon. I don't know if you're aware of this, but you are like, you're very big now in the awards prognosticating game. So oh, just wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're horrified, but anyway, that's like the way it like is. The, just the term, the awards prognosticating <laughs> game. I, know, <laughs> like, right. I did not know I was part of this. <laughs> I didn't know there was a whole industry, but here we are. No. Um, and yeah, so yeah, that was a big moment. And um. Orphan Black will always be one of the classics that people go back to. Mm. Um, and, but now you're about to head off to Broadway again and you're yeah. starring with Laurie Metcalf and Paul Sparks and I think Millicent Simmons on um, yes. Mantella's Grey House. Wow. Like, are you, I mean, what's, how exciting is that? It's, it's beyond exciting. It's nourishing. Like, it's like, I'm, I, I don't, I, I'm, emotional thinking about it I'm like still you know we're inside of the rehearsal process which it's been a long time since I've been in a rehearsal hall um it's like us you're you're making soup together you're throwing in different ingredients seeing what tastes good sometimes you need a little more of this sometimes you yeah. do too much of that it's like it's such a patient um creative space to be in and yeah like as an actor wow. I mean I'm learning I'm just learning I'm just learning 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 and Meeting. watching Lori like <laughs> who's just like an absolute creature yeah like she's such a comedic dramatic like dramatic force she's unbelievable yeah. she's one of the greats I, I i saw a taping of the connors recently and um oh yeah just in awe of her like she's just yeah i mean you just but that's, yeah yeah no what were you gonna say because i just no i just think like, like to be to be in a in a room with people like that i mean people might would say that about you even obviously you have a lot of experience too but i'm just saying like you're with someone like laurie metcalf and you're just learning stuff and you're able to really kind of exercise that instrument I suppose I don't even know that sounds really geeky but you know what I'm saying That's I'm what I'm so geeky for this kind of stuff mm -hmm. like this is what I geek out about is like what is this what is this you know alchemy what is this chemistry that's working on all of us and we're we're making something together that we can't even define yet um it's yeah. really it's really thrilling that's very cool I'm very excited for you all right final question so where to now for She-Hawk obviously there's we, we don't know if there's going to be every another season but you may end up in a movie one day. Is that the story? Is that what's going to happen? I truly have no idea. And I feel like uh, the internet knows more than I do <laughs> any of these ways. Um, but I would love to. I'd love to see what, I'd love to put her, as, as we had so many other actors come to our show and tonally shift their character, put him, him or her in like a totally different scenario, a different universe, which is so fun about the Marvel universe is that there are, multiple mul there's a multiverse it's, i didn't know yeah. if you're aware but there is a multiverse yeah um but it's like uh yeah putting her in a situation that is very unlikely i think that would be super fun just because the thing about she hulk to me is that she's so out of place <laughs> and yeah. that out of placeness i think has a lot of it's, oh. it's got legs <laughs> it's got the i know man i'm telling i think there's so much potential i look forward to that but in the meantime thank you for your time today and uh, good luck with gray house I'm, I, I wish i could see it in person but i'm sure you're gonna yeah. be thank you so much it was so good to talk to you again mm -hmm.